Well, when I begin modeling a project like this, I really like to try and begin with something simple. Something easy, kind of ease me into the project. And then as time goes on, I'll look for things that are a little more complex. And by the time I'm getting toward the end, I've kind of warmed up. And I feel like I'm better able to deal with the complex parts of the project. So for me right now, it looks like, say, this trunk is probably pretty easy. So let's work with that. To do that, I think I'll just begin with a polygon plane. I'll press Shift A, Mesh, Plane. And here we go. Let's press the 7 key on the number pad. And currently, if I try and select it, I can't because look at where it came in. It came in within the reference collection. So I'm not able to select it. So let's just click and drag that out to the main scene collection here. And now if I come over and click, I can select that now. All right, so I'll press Alt-Z to turn on X-ray mode here. And let's just uh, slide this up. Maybe I'll scale it down a bit like this to get it kind of in place. And there we go. There's the beginning of our car. All right, I'm going to tab into edit mode, and I want to split it down the middle so that I can apply a mirror modifier. Let's press Control-R to insert an edge loop. And if I hover over an edge, it will try and put that new edge perpendicular to it. So now that it's where I want it, I can click and then right click to ensure that it goes right down the middle of the object. All right, now I'm gonna hit the three key to go to face mode. You can see those different views or selections up here. We've got vertex where we can select a point. We've got edge and face and each one of these is the one, two or three key. So if I hit the three key on the keyboard, I can choose this face and I'll just hit delete and choose delete faces. Now if I come over to the modifiers panel, I can pull this down and add a mirror modifier. And there we go. Now we've got a situation where, say if I go back to vertex select and select a point and hit the G key, if I move one side around, the other side comes along with it. Now one problem I have is if I take this point I'm going to turn on the move manipulator here. If I take this point and pull it, it can separate. And I don't want it to do that. I want anything that's on that center line to stay connected, to stay clipped together. And here we can turn on clipping so it'll do that. Now if I select this point and try and pull it apart, I can't. And if I take this point and slam it back into the middle, now if I hit G or try and move it, I can't. I can't move it off that center line. So that's good. In addition, if we want to select anything over on this mirrored side, we can turn on the cage on the other side. Now you can see we can select a point over here as well as over here. And when you do, of course, the selection is still on this side. This is the only real side over here on the right. The other side is just the mirror. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just take some of these points and hit G and begin moving them into place. And I can kind of put them right there to get it a little closer to the shape of the trunk. But as you can see, it needs some work. <laughs> we need a few more edges. So I'm gonna press Control R and I'm gonna click and click again here. And now I have some points where I can select and hit G. And maybe I'll move this one here. And this I can move up into here. And you can see I'm just beginning to get a little bit more close to the shape of the trunk. Now let's press Control R and I'll scroll the mouse wheel maybe uh, just once and click here and click again. And now I can take these points and move these out just a bit to get us a little bit closer to the shape of the trunk. Now, if we tumble around, you can see that that polygon plane was created on the ground level. We don't yet have it in the right place from the side view. So let's hit the three key. Let's hit the A key to select all those points and let's move this up. Now we can hit the R key and turn it a bit and bring that down some. So now we're getting it a little bit closer into place here. We can also go to the back view by pressing Control-1. Now we can begin taking a look at this and see how we're doing. If I want to move this down to about here, I'm trying to align the top. But now we can take these, I'm going to press Alt and click to select that row back here. And we can take these and just hit G and move these down here like this. We could maybe move this whole row of edges down as well. I can just click and drag those down. 
And then we can begin taking some of these and selecting and maybe hit G and move these down like this. So just moving things around, trying to get them in place so it kind of looks like it's conforming to the three-dimensional car that the images here represent. So I'm going to tumble around again, Alt-Z to come out of X-ray mode. And that's not bad. That's looking pretty good. Let's come over to the uh, side view and see it from here. And you know what we should do? Is we should take a look at it in quad view. Blender's quad view can be accessed by pressing Control alt q And now for this one up here, we can tumble around and take a look at it here. But these are locked into the orthographic views. So this one here, you can't tumble around. If I hit the middle mouse button and hold and drag, I can't tumble here. Now it might be kind of nice to be able to see this from the back view. Currently, we can only see it from the front. I'm going to press Alt-Z here. And even if we press Control-1, only this changes, right? That doesn't help us much. I want this to be the back view, at least temporarily, while we work on the trunk. To unlock these views, you can press the N key over here come over to View, and if you come all the way down here to Quad View, you can turn off Lock Rotation. So I'll turn this off. Now, I'll hit the N key here. If I come over and hover over this view, I can press Control-1, and now we're in the back view. That's pretty helpful, I like that. So let's tab back into Edit Mode, and now we can begin taking some of these and maybe moving them up just a bit, like this, just a bit. Maybe move this one up a bit. So I'm just trying to curve this a little so it maybe conforms to what at least I think is the shape of that trunk. I'm going to pull this up some and this up as well. There we go. Maybe I'll take these down just a bit as if it's curving down just a little here. There we go. And of course, you can come to the back view or any of the views that would be helpful and pull some points around here like this. Maybe I'll pull this down just a bit like this. There we go. All right, let's take a look at it now in the 3D view again. I'm going to press Control Alt Q and then I'll press Alt Z and here we go. Here is the beginning of that trunk. Now it's pretty blocky we can, of course, add a subdivision surface modifier to it, and we can also smooth it. So to add a subdivision surface modifier, we can come over here to Add Modifier, click on Subdivision Surface, and then let's take this viewport levels up to 2 here, and then we'll also turn on the cage here, so we can see it when we tab into Edit Mode. And then, finally, let's smooth this. We can right-click and choose Shade Smooth. And there we go. Now it's looking pretty good, right? We can see that that's probably pretty close. Let's hit the 7 key, tab into edit mode, and now we can begin to move just a little bit more here. We can move these points out to match the drawing just a little bit better now. Something like this. All right, and there we go. Now the last thing we could do is change the material here in our viewport to get a sense of how it might look as paint on a car. And we can do that with our matte caps. And they are up here in these viewport shading choices up here. We have a pull down. And here we can change the lighting and materials in the viewport to matte cap. And then if we click on this, we have our choices of what we want to use. And right here, this one right here is really good. This metal car paint matte cap is really good. So let's click on that. And now if we tumble around, we get a really good sense of what it's going to look like with a shiny material on it. And we can use this to see if there's any dents or warps or any problem areas that we need to fix. So this is going to be helpful as we move forward. All right, now that we've got our trunk in the next video, let's work on the hood.